Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command and the Twilight Zone Companion. And as you know, I've been posting Twilight Zone minutes on different episodes of the Twilight Zone every day for a little while now. And the one I did yesterday was What You Need, based on a story by Lewis Paget. And uh, with a script by Rod Serling, starring Ernest Truex and Steve Cochran, and so forth. And I mentioned that Tales from Tomorrow, Tales of Tomorrow had done an episode uh, earlier of the same story, and, but with a very, very different um, angle of attack. So what I'm going to do today as a bonus and as a thank you to all of you for spreading the word about Twilight Zone minutes and Twilight Zone commentaries is I'm going to show you the entire episode of Tales of Tomorrow. It stars Edgar Staley as the old man. He would later appear in Twilight Zone's Long Live Walter Jameson. He was quite a wonderful actor. and. Um, Tales of Tomorrow ran from 1951 to 1953. It did over 80 episodes, all science fiction stories, adaptations, etc., by some of the great science fiction writers. It was co-created by Theodore Sturgeon, the great Theodore Sturgeon, who was one of the top writers of science fiction. And, uh, and he uh, later would go on to write two wonderful episodes of Star Trek, A Muck Time and um, Shore Leave. And he, when I was a teenager, into my early 20s, he was one of my mentors, a dear, dear man. And in fact, my photo of him appears on two of his books. And, uh, and he was really a wonderful mentor, really a one of a kind. And uh, so if you haven't ever read anything by Theodore Sturgeon, go out right now and read something. But for, and, and the other thing about um, Tales of Tomorrow was that it was performed live. It, it was broadcast as it was happening uh, for the East Coast. Then it would be on delay for the West Coast. They would shoot uh, a filmed version off of a monitor. It's called a kinescope. And they would air that three hours later for the for the West Coast. So, um, but it was, uh, it's an interesting show. It has some amazing actors in it. Paul Newman and many, many, many others. Thomas Mitchell and you name it. You'll, you'll see phenomenal actors in it. So um, definitely check it out. Lon Chaney Jr. is in it as well. And... Uh, it's of uh, variable quality. Leslie Nielsen's in it too, uh, and uh, but it's 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 very fun and very interesting. And if you're a science fiction fan, it's worth worth looking at. But but for now, I'm going to show you the entire episode of Tales of Tomorrow. What you need, and if you see me bending down over and over, it's because I'm throwing the ball for the dogs and uh, <laughs> multitasking. <laughs> but uh, tomorrow we'll have another episode of the Twilight Zone, or the Twilight Zone Minute. But for now, here's Tales of Tomorrow what you need. Tales of Tomorrow. Tonight's Tales of Tomorrow, What You Need. Starring William Redfield with Edgar Staley. Good evening. What can I do for you? Maybe you can tell me what I need. Pardon? Your sign says I have what you need. Well? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh... Carmichael. Tom Carmichael. I'm a freelance writer. I've been watching your store for a couple of days now. Oh. I think there's a story here. Well, you're welcome to look around if you like. Mm-hmm. Well, for a beat-up looking joint, your customers seem to be pretty well healed. I hadn't noticed. I know it's a bit early, Mr. Talley, but I really, well, I couldn't wait. Uh, have you the time to get what I need? If you'll wait just a moment, I'll get it for you. Hey, you know, uh, I'd like to get one of those, too. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, the, the gimmick, the gizmo, what we all need. 
Oh, I couldn't. This is much too... Oh, take it. Take it, please. Good day. <laughs> I can't seem to wait. $5,000 for a gun. Your eyes taking everything. Would you mind telling me what business you're in? Yes, I would. I could check you through the Better Business Bureau. As you wish. In the past two days, I have seen people walk out of here with, let me see, an egg, a pair of rubber gloves, a test tube, and now a gun. Rather a weird assortment, wouldn't you say? I would indeed. And now, if you'll excuse Is me... Is the price always 5000 It varies. Hmm. I'm beginning to get the point. You're not interested in talking to me. That's very clever of you. I could go to the police. The gun. Is there a permit for it? And what makes it worth $5,000? Do you think the police could be interested in your business? That sounds like a threat. No. Just my duty as a citizen. Your business might be blackmail. So it might. Well, then I'd better tell the police. Are you have my blessing. Martha, should I put up some tea? Well, that would be nice. Perhaps the young man would like a cup. Oh, no, no. He has an appointment with the police. No, no, no. It can wait. No. I just love a cup of tea. I wouldn't want to keep you. Oh, you win, hands down. I had no intention of going to the police, and I think you knew it. It would make little difference either way. Frankly, all I'm interested in is the story. Or let's put it another way. I see a sign which says, I have what you need. I'm a poor, struggling writer. But am I less in need than the wealthy-looking people that you serve? Peter, I think the young man has a point. You come to me, then, as a customer? Well, yes, as a customer. Will you excuse me a moment? I'll put up the tea. Mr. Carmichael is what you need. Carry it on your person. Thank you. You know, I think I'm beginning to get your record now. You're an extremely intelligent young man. You're some kind of phony medium. You spin a few dials and tell the future, and then you sell it at 5,000 per. It's quite a deal. Good day, Mr. Carmichael. You can whistle for the 5,000. I had no intention of charging you that fee. I know you couldn't afford it. And what do I owe you? Pay me after you're satisfied. When will I know? Soon enough. Oh, there's one thing I must tell you very frankly. I'm not very happy with you as a customer. I must ask you to promise that you'll never come near my shop again, nor mention it to anyone. In exchange for what? In exchange for what I've given you. Might this be in the nature of a bribe? Good day, Mr. Carmichael. The young man will not be staying. Oh, isn't that a pity? Well, I'll probably be back. No, Mr. Carmichael. I've done you a service. Let's leave it at that. Depends on the worth of your service. It will be worth much to you. Keep it on your person. Cut it out. You cut it out. He gave you the shears. I'm not through with the old buzzard yet. I'll get something out of this. Yeah. Maybe another pair of scissors. I said stop it. Don't push me around. I don't go for it. Look, if you're going to mope on that, you may as well take me home. Well, I got to figure it. There's an angle somewhere. There's always an angle. And you're always figuring. 
tell you the truth, I'm getting a little tired of waiting around for you to come up with the right answer. I tell you, I saw it. A check for $5,000. Six banker types walk in and walk out with packages. What if they all pay $5,000? That's $30,000. You and your telephone numbers. Big talk. But we always wind up eating in the automat. Dutch. The very least I get out of this is a story. That I promise. Yeah, you won't even get that. You want to bet? Come on, drink up. Well, what's the rush? It's makeup night on Fred's magazine. I think maybe I can badger him into giving me a little advance on this yarn. Ha uh ha. -huh. He'll want the facts. What then, Sonny Boy? Just watch an operator operate. Five will get you ten. He okays the story. Hey, waiter, check. Yeah. Ah. Hey! Take it easy. Here, keep it. Hey, mister. You forgot something. Hmm? I keep those two. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe you better give them to me. Close. Yeah, do tell. Wasn't my fault you got your scarf caught. All right, all right, there. take it easy. I ain't liable to sue. Well, this she is. It's a lucky thing. It's a darn lucky thing. You owe your life to these shears. Yeah. About that story, Tom. Oh. You'll listen now, huh? Yeah, look, I think we can all use a drink. I got a bottle right here in the drawer. Go get it, and then you can talk your head off. Okay? Let's go, honey. This, Mr. Carmichael, is what you need. Carry it on your person. Tom? Get your coat, baby. We're getting out of here. Tom, Tom, what about that story? Forget it. It's mine now. It's all mine. We'll return to the second act of What You Need in just a minute. Meanwhile, 
Oh, are you a fishing fan? Well, if you're not, you will be after I show you this outfit. This is the Maslin Klamath coat, and it's made of specially woven Zealand-treated Zealand-treated poplin. See uh, these pockets? Well, they're one of the things that make this most wonderful coat for any kind of fishing that you ever want to do at any time. See, they're bellows pockets, and there's enough room in them to hold all your lure boxes, all your other gear. Yes, even all that gear that, that you carry. Over here, we have some more pockets. This one for cigarettes. This one for sunglasses or glasses, depending on which kind you need. Here's a ring to hold your snippers. All you fishermen know what those are for. And here's a wonderful idea. These loops to put your rod in. If you want to free your hands, the butt down here, the rest of it here, so that you can change flies, light a cigarette, do anything you want to with your hands free. Now that's just the front. In the back, we have a ring back here, of course, for your landing net. Notice that this loop is six inches long so that you can reach it more easily either from the right or the left-hand side. Then we have here a great big mammoth pocket that goes all the way across the back. Zips open so you can store your lunch, rain jacket, or anything like that in there. Now get this, all this coat, all those features, and it costs only $18.50. Now, when it gets a little warmer, well, Maslin has the answer to that, too. And that is the famous Maslin Tackle Pack Fishing Vest, designed by Lee Wolf, who was one of America's foremost fishermen. Here you'll notice that everything is carried high and dry to make for easier wading. As you can see, you have all the features that you have in the Klamath coat. At 1575, it's no wonder that the Tackle Pack is just about the most popular single fishing garment in the country. See these two wonderful Maslin garments now at the store where you see this new display with a tackle pack over here, and on this side, the winter weather hunting coat, just to remind you that Maslin also makes fine clothes for hunting. Now, if you want the name of your local Maslin dealer, all you have to do is write your name and address on a postcard and mail it to Maslin Sportswear, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Maslin Sportswear, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and we'll notify you where you can see all these fine Maslin clothes. And now back to Act Two of What You Need, starring William Redfield and Edgar Staley. hoping he wouldn't come back. Perhaps he wants to thank you. No, no, I'm afraid he wants much more than that. Well, there's one way to find out. Get confirmation from his own lips of what I already know. Oh, good evening. I'm afraid this is all I have. Then keep it. Oh, no, 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 I want you to have it. Your service was hardly repayable. She has came in handy. Hmm? You know what happened? Yes. How? I asked you not to come back. I had to come back. You saved my life. Then we'll say that I accept your thanks and let's be done with it. Those men, the ones who come here to get what they need, they're clients. They keep returning. What if they are? Well, if you're willing to help them when they're in trouble, why not me? Is it the money? I'll get the money. It's not the money. I help those who are worthy of help. Why is it so important that you should see into your future? All right. I'll be honest with you. That would be wise. A knowledge of the future would help me over hurdles, hurdles that have blocked me in the past. I want to get married, Mr. Talley. My girl thinks I'm a flop. She's not the kind who would marry a flop. If I can find out what's in store for me, for us... You labor I'm... under a misapprehension. I cannot map out your future. Every man has several possible futures. The specific future that's to be yours must be your own free choice. Uh, I don't understand that. When you come in here, you're in the beam of my scanner. In my back room, I have a machine. By turning a calibrated dial, I can check on your possible futures. In one of these futures last night, I saw you killed by a printing press. And, uh, in my other futures? I saw... Well, let's say that I saw various possibilities, depending upon how you react to different crises that arise. Well, uh, tell me what they are. I can't do that. Why do you do it for others? It must be my own free choice. I stumbled on this power quite by accident. I don't care about that. But I do. I was a scientist. I, I worked with electronics, and I, at night I dabbled with astrology. The pure science and the abstract hobby led me to this. 
And I'm beginning to wonder if I can cope with it. Oh, no, no, come off it. I'm not a child. This thing, whatever it is, no, no matter how you came across it, it could be worth millions. I give every penny above my living expenses to charity. Tell it to Sweeney. Get out of here. I'm sorry I saved you. It's too late for that, old man, and much, much beside the point. Then come to your point, Mr. Carmichael. If you're not interested in money, that's your business. Well, frankly, money interests me. It always has. And in the end, money will kill you. Oh, no. Not so long as you can turn the dial on that machine. And what if I refuse? Something tells me you know the answer to that as well as I do. You claim you're not interested in money. You're not interested in playing God. You're just doing it for mankind. You're saving the needy. Well, I will gamble that you love this little game of yours and will get rid of anything that stands in the way, and I'm in the way. So you are. Publicity will ruin you, and I'm just the guy to do it. I subscribe to your service. My price for silence is the future. I want to know what tomorrow will bring. I want what I need. I'd sooner wreck my machine. Go ahead! Peter! He's done so much good. One of those men you saw, the one who gave me the check for $5,000, in two years, he'll develop a serum to combat polio. Without the gun I gave him today, he'd have been killed by a thief who's ransacking his apartment. I'm not asking you to stop helping others. Just help me. Peter, perhaps it's best to do as he says. Where can I reach you? With what I need? With what you need? Well, I'm, uh meeting my girl in a bar on the corner of Greenwich and Fourth. I'll be there all evening. I'll send a messenger boy over with what you need. I'm, uh, sorry I had to, well, use persuasion. It's quite all right. I anticipated it. Mm. I was wrong about him. He's evil. I must check this at once. I must be certain. Absolutely certain. Not ginger ale. Ah, I'm fine. I feel just great. You're higher than a kite. Mm -hmm. The world's a kite. I got it by the tail. Up in the clouds. It's a long way down. No, oh, no, we're not coming down, baby. Not this time. Dream, dream, dream. And the old man is worth a million bucks. A walking mint. You know, just one little machine. But in the hands of the right guy, you could own the world. Yeah, but it's his machine, and he's got other plans for it. No, I'm not interested in his plans. Not in the slightest. I don't know. I always thought I was pretty tough, but this... I don't know. Now, what goes through that beautiful blonde head of yours? The old man saved your life. Maybe you ought to be grateful. I told him thanks. What else? You're going to steal that machine. Is that it? I don't know. I haven't exactly figured out the mechanics of it yet, but I get the machine. I get it, 
Don't I break a leg trying? If you don't quit drinking, you're li liable to break a leg, period. It's slippery outside. <laughs> Hell, we gotta celebrate, don't we? We don't make a million every day, or at least we didn't. You, Mr. Carmichael? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, in the flesh. Ah. Oh. Here, don't spend it all in one place. I don't think the old goat has a sense of humor. <laughs> Smooth. Yeah, well, just not the thing for a night like this. Yeah? But if it's what I need... Hey, what do you think you're doing? Are you crazy? Yeah, like a fox. You remember I almost threw away the shears? Well, little Tommy boy does not make the same mistake twice. All right, that's got it. Uh, let's blow. You'll fall flat on your face. It'll serve you right. Oh, oh. is that my sweet little baby talking? Take it easy. It's wet outside. Hmm? Uh -uh. The chance. I swear he, he slipped right in front of me. Like like he was pushed. Uh, Ma, please don't. I'd rather you didn't. Well, I just thought perhaps the no, news... No, no, the... We'd be interrupted by the news, and, and I'd have to hear the consequences of my action. Martha, I, I can't cope with... Darling, I don't understand. The boy. I killed him. Oh, well, I can't believe that. You, you couldn't do such a thing. And now for the local news. Just a half hour ago, the snowstorm claimed its first casualty. A man identified as Tom Carmichael was instantly killed when he slipped beneath the wheels of a truck. You... you could have saved him. Worse. I sent him to his death. He was evil, but... death is for God to decide. You had no right. And had I the right to step into the fate of all those others to play God on Earth? No mortal man has that right. Oh, Peter, you've done so much good. And tonight... I killed a man. There must have been cause. Yes, a cause. I saw it in the machine. A life for life. Tom Carmichael's for mine. In two weeks, he would have killed me and stolen the machine for his own evil gain. But even so, you had no right. I didn't ask for this terrible power. Oh, God, why was it granted me? It's not for man on earth. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.